ಶ್ರೀ ನೃಸಿಂಹಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದ ಉಚ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಪುಂಡರೀಕಾಕ್ಷ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರ್ವಲೋಕಾತ್ಮನ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ತಿಗ್ಮಚಕ್ರಿಣೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಪುಂಡರೀಕಾಕ್ಷ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರ್ವಲೋಕಾತ್ಮನ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ತಿಗ್ಮಚಕ್ರಿಣೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಕರುಣಾಕರ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ವಿಶ್ವರೂಪಾಯ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರ್ವಮೂರ್ತ ನಮೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ್ಯದೇವಾಯ ಗೋಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣಹಿತಾಯ ಜಗದ್ಧಿತಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮತ್ವೆ ಸೃಜತೆ ವಿಶ್ವ ಸ್ಥಿತೌ ಪಾಲಯತೆ ಪುನಃ ರುದ್ರೂಪಾಯ ಕಲ್ಪಾಂತೆ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯಂ ತ್ರಿಮೂರ್ತ ಯಕ್ಷಾಸುರಸಿದ್ಧ ನಾಗಾಗಂಧರ್ವಕಿನ್ನರ ಪಿಶಾಚಾರಾಕ್ಷಸಾಶ್ಚೈವ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಪಶವಸ್ತ ಪಕ್ಷಿಣಸ್ಥಾವರಾಶ್ಚೈವ ಪಿಪೀಲಿಕ ಸರೀಸೃಪ ಭೂಮ್ಯಾಪೋಗ್ನಿರ್ನಭೋ ವಾಯು ಶಬ್ದಸ್ಪರ್ಶಸ್ತಾರಸ ರೂಪಂ ಗಂಧೋ ಮನೋ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಆತ್ಮ ಕಾಲಸ್ತುಣಾಂ ಪರಮೇತತ್ವಮಚ್ಯುತ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿದ್ಯೆ ಭವಾನ್ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಅಸತ್ಯಂ ತ್ವಂ ವಿಷಾಮೃತೆ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತ ನಿವೃತ್ತ ಕರ್ಮ ವೇದೋದಿತ ಭವಾನ್ ಸಮಸ್ತಕರ್ಮ ಭೋಕ್ತ ಕರ್ಮೋಪಕರಣಿ ತ್ವಮೇವ ವಿಷ್ಣೋ ಸರ್ವಾಣಿ ಸರ್ವಕರ್ಮ ಫಲಂ ಚಯತ್ ಮಯ್ಯನ್ಯತ್ರ ತಥಾಶೇಷ ಭೂತೇಷು ಭುವನೇಷು ತವೈವ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತಿರೈಶ್ವರ್ಯ ಗುಣಸಂಸೂಚಿಕೀ ಪ್ರಭೋ ತ್ವಾಂ ಯೋಗಿನಶ್ಚಿಂತಯಂತಿ ತ್ವಾಂ ಯಜಂತಿ ಚ ಯಾಜಕಾ ಹವ್ಯಕ್ಕವ್ಯ ಭುಗೇಕಸ್ತ್ವ ಪಿತೃದೇವಸ್ವಧೃತ್ ರೂಪಂ ಮಹತ್ತೆ ಸ್ಥಿತಮತ್ರ ವಿಶ್ವ ತತಶ್ಚ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ಜಗದೇತದೀಶ ೂಪಿ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಚೂತಭೇದಾತ್ಮಖ್ಯಮತೀವ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮಾ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮಿವಿಶೇಷಣಗೋಚರೆ ಯತ್ಪರಮಾತ್ಮೂಪ ಕಿಮ್ಯಚಿಂತ್ಯಂ ತವ ರೂಪಮಸ್ತಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಸರ್ವೂತು ಸರ್ವಾತ್ಮನ್ ಯಾ ಶಕ್ತಿರಪರಾತವ being obsessed with anger hiranyakashipu who was very great in bodily strength thus chastised his exalted devotee son prahlad with harsh words cursing him again and again hiranyakashipu to have his sword got up from his royal throne and with great anger struck his fist against the column. Text 15. Tadaiva tasmin ninado tibasano babho vayananda kataham asputat yambaiswa disnyo pagatam tvajadaya shudpaswa namadya 
Jayam Pandamere. Then from within the pillar came a fearful sound which appeared to crack the covering of the universe. Oh my dear Yudhishthir, this sound reached even the abodes of the demigods like Lord Brahma, and when the demigods heard it, they thought, oh, now our planets are being destroyed. Purpose by Shri Prabhupada, as we sometimes become very much afraid at the sound of a thunderbolt, perhaps thinking that our houses will be destroyed. The great demigods like Lord Brahma feared the thundering sound that came from the pillar. He um, feared the thundering sound that came from the pillar in front of Hiranya Text 16. <coughs> Savikraman Putra Badhepsur Ojasa Nishamya Nirhadam Apurvam Adbudam Anta Sabhayamna Tadarshatarpadam Vitatra Suryana Surari Yudhapa While showing his extraordinary prowess, Hiranyakashapu who desired to kill his own son heard that wonderful tumultuous sound which had never before been heard. Upon hearing the sound, the other leaders of the demons were afraid. None of them could find the origin of that sound in the assembly. Text 17. Satyam vidatam Udbahan Stambhe Sambhayam Nam Bikam Namanu To prove that the statement of his servant Prabhat Maharaj was substantial, in other words, to prove that the Supreme Lord is present everywhere, even within the pillar opposite an, an assembly hall, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, exhibited a wonderful form never seen before. The form was neither that of a man nor that of a lion. Thus the Lord appeared in his wonderful form in the assembly hall. Purport. When Hiranyakashipu asked Prahlad Maharaj, where is your Lord? Is he present in that pillar? Prahlad Maharaj furiously replied, yes, my Lord is present everywhere. Therefore, to convince Hiranyakashipu that the statement of Prahlad Maharaj was unmistakably <coughs> True, the Lord appeared from the pillar. The Lord appeared as half lion and half man, so that Hiranyakashipu could not understand whether the great giant was a lion or a human being. To substantiate Prahlad's statement, the Lord proved that his devotee, as declared in Bhagavad Gita, is never vanquished. Kautya Pratishani Hinamekarta Pranshi. Prahlad Maharaj's demonic father had repeatedly threatened to kill Prahlad, but Prahlad was confident that he could not be killed since he was protected by the Supreme Lord. By appearing from the pillar, the Lord encouraged his devotee, saying, in effect, don't worry, I am present here. By manifesting his form as Nrsimha, the Lord also preserved the truth of Lord Brahma's promise that Hiran was not to be killed by any animal or any man. The Lord appeared in form that could not be said to be fully a man or a lion. And so then, the description is continuing from uh, this point, explaining how Hiranyakashipu, even though completely deluded, because he saw a creature which no one ever saw before, and he thought he knows everything was going on in the universe because he was in full control. But then the Lord surprised him. Lord always has many surprises. And uh, nevertheless, Hiranya Kishapu was fighting with Nishingadi. And uh, as we seen, <coughs> that uh, Hiranya Kishapu was very similar to Nishingadi, that, uh, that uh, <coughs> Hiranya Kishapu's chest was like Shila, was like a stone. But uh, Rasingadev's claws 
or nails were like chisels. Uh, <clears throat> and he cut this stone very easily, stone-like chest of Hiranyakashipu. <clears throat> Actually, Hiranyakashipu's body was so strong because after he performed the austerities and then Lord Brahma poured Amrit over his body and he got uh, amazing celestial body, invincible body, which was so strong that even the thunderbolt of Indra couldn't do any harm to him. Like, you know, sometimes, I mean, here in Canada you have cold winters and if you wear woolen sweater or something like that, and sometimes you have this static electricity on your clothes, right? Which makes cracking sound, but doesn't do any much harm, right? So the striking of the, you know, lightning bolt of Indra over the body of Hiranyakashipu kind of resembled that, you know, static electricity. <laughs> Didn't do much harm. So no, no one could defeat Hiranyakashipu, he was so strong. But then, um, it is described that Nursingadev that easily defeated him. <clears throat> Actually, this part of Srimad Bhagavatam is really wonderful because it describes how Hiranyakashipu, he was so serious about fighting with Nursingadev. And uh, despite of, you know, Nursingadev having uh, such a huge form, and despite of having so many weapons in his hands, and uh, so many hands also. And Hiranyakashipu had only two hands, and he was much smaller than uh, Nrsingadev. Still, he was fighting with him. That is the false ego. False ego is something which is completely blinding people. So he was completely blinded by the influence of his false ego. He was thinking that he had the chance to defeat Nrsingadev. And actually, Nrsingadev, as it is described in different Qurans, because this is Nitya Lila, so he appears many, many times. Um, we have uh, in uh, South India, very wonderful place, which is Ahogalam, etc. Uh, I know the uh, head uh, priest of the Ahogalam temple he actually lives in Chennai. Very wonderful, Sri Vaishnava very young and enthusiastic preacher. And uh, so this place is dedicated to Lord Nusimhadev. Because uh, Lord Nusimhadev appeared in a hobble. And uh, thank you. Yeah, so proud, and uh, we also have, if you go to, how many of you been to a hobble? Okay, a few people. That's very good. So this place is dedicated to the appearance of Lord Nasimhadev. Also in Navadvi, uh, we have Nasimhapali, another place dedicated to Lord Nasimhadev. He made his stopover after killing Girani Kashiputu to rinse his hands, rinse the blood of his hands. And um, by the way, this particular pastime, which is described here, didn't even happen on this planet. It happened on the heavenly planets. But uh, there are so many uh, instances of appearance of what we think that we were talking with another Varanga Prabhu. Because, uh, you know, today, today is dedicated to the appearance of what we think of it. But we had appearance of what we think of it a uh, few weeks back. And uh, I said, it's absolutely legitimate to celebrate the appearance of Lord Nisimhadev more than once a year. We can celebrate his appearance not only every year, every month we can celebrate, every week we can celebrate, every day we can celebrate, every hour, every minute, every second we can celebrate. Because since time immemorial, Lord Nisimhadev keeps appearing in different places, at different times, 
So probably the entire range of you know the time scale within the 24 hours and uh, I'm not so good in maths that so many minutes and so many seconds probably the entire range of time is covered by all these appearances already so <laughs> any therefore it is called Nitya Lila eternal pastime so Nusingadev uh, keeps appearing and reappearing in different uh, parts of the universe and I'm pretty sure that he appeared on our planet much more than one time so if there is more than one place on this planet dedicated to the appearance of Lord Nusingadev that's not to be confused. Yeah, it's quite legitimate because yeah, he appeared many, many times. And uh, in other places in Puranas, like there is a specific Nusinga Purana dedicated to Lord Nusinga Dev and uh, some uh, of his other pastimes are described, how he appeared. Same scenario. Same Hiranyaka Shippu, same Prahlad Maharaj, same Nusingadev, but actually it's only Nusingadev who is the same. <laughs> right. Hiranyaka Shippu is a different Jiva, Prahlad Maharaj is a different Jiva, right? Huh? Because after this pastime they become liberated. <laughs> and then another person is playing the role of Hiranyaka Shippu, another person is playing the role of Prahlad Maharaj. And so, the thing is that just for variety, he is changing some details of his past times. It is like my, you know, I heard uh, different episodes from my Guru Maharaj, Shonindra Dhamma Maharaj, who is a great fan of Lord Nusingadev, Nusingabhakta, and also his appearance is very close to Nusingachatubhashi. And um, so he was recalling his descriptions how Lord Nusikadev appeared one time from a lamp on the table. And uh, another time Nusikadev appeared from the lotus flower, smoke, and then he grew. But then the other time, same, in the same circumstance, you know, Hiranyi Kishapu challenging Prahlad Maharaj, where is your Lord? And that time, Nrsingadev didn't appear from anywhere, he just walked into the town. He just appeared on the horizon. And when Hiranyi Kishapu asked Prahlad Maharaj, where is your Lord? Then he heard the um, very strange sound, boom, boom, like a, you know, earthquake, but happening on regular, you know, the sound comes coming in regular <coughs> intervals, and the whole earth is shaking. And then he was asking, where is your Lord? And then Prahlad Maharaj showed, here is my Lord. And then on the horizon, Hiranyakashipu saw that gigantic figure on the single walking into the town. <laughs> and entering into the palace, etc. And, uh, and in, the, in, in that instance, Nusingadev appeared in an enormously gigantic form. And still Hiranyakashipu was fighting with him. Still Hiranyakashipu was thinking, I'll defeat him. This is how big the false ego of the demons are. Much bigger than they themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and so, then it is described that Nishingadev was fighting with Hiranyakashipu and then he kind of caught hold of him but then Hiranyakashipu disappeared somewhere you know some little blood came out but then Hiranyakashipu disappeared and Nishingadev was a little puzzled he was looking here and there no Hiranyakashipu so Nishingadev decided okay what to do he escaped I cannot find him. So, and then he went, and on the way, in the same way as he had a stopover at Nusinga Pali, uh, he also had a stopover somewhere, again to wash his hands. And then he was, you know, like, because hands were covered with blood, and so he was washing them thoroughly, and then from under his nails, 
on you know uh, one nail on the right hand and one nail on the left hand, two halves of the body of uh, Hiranyi Kashipu fell off, <laughs> fell out. Actually, it is described that Hiranyi Kashipu was so small in that past time, he just got stuck under the Singadev's nails. <laughs> but still he was fighting with him. In that circumstance, he was foolish enough to think, I have a chance to defeat the Singadev. And this is happening every time. So in this particular pastime, which is described in Bhagavad Puran, that uh, Hiranyi Kishpo was not that much smaller than Nursingadev, so maybe just a few times, maybe three or four times or whatever. And then he, he was thinking that I have good chances to defeat Nursingadev. And he was, he continually was, you know, uh, charging at Nusingadev, and then it is described, you know, because Nusingadev is in the form of a half lion, so it is described as a cat is playing with the mouse, you know, before killing the mouse, the cat is just throwing the mouse here and there. So, you know, Nusingadev was taking Hiranyakashipu, throwing him against this wall, that wall, you know, like you watching this. You know, action movies, some guys, you know, fly, flying, you know, uh, getting smashed against this wall and that wall. So, th this is what was happening with Hiranya Kashyapur repeatedly. And regularly he was fainting, you know, he was going unconscious on the floor, you know, and, but then Rusinda was waiting <laughs> what will happen next. But then after he would regain his consciousness, he would pick up his sword and again charge, you know, at Nusingadev. And finally, I mean, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam just gives, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, synopsis of this pastor, very short descriptions, but other Puranas, they described it more elaborately. And, Srimad Bhagavatam says that at a certain point, Nusingadev just started laughing at Hiranya Kashyap. Because it was so foolish. I mean, Nusingadev was just playing with him, right? Was not taking it seriously, like a fight. Uh, Shri Prabhupada said in one class, uh, Krishna is always happy, uh, and therefore he's always smiling. Never stop smiling. Even when he is fighting with demons, he's, he's, he continues smiling. And so, yes, with, even though, you know, Nusingadev was displaying this kind of anger superficially, but it was like in the play, scaring Hirani Kishpo, trying, you know, to help him to understand that, you know, he's putting his life at great risk by fighting with him. But then Hiranyi Kishapu was continuously attacking Nusingadev. And at one point, Nusingadev started laughing. He broke into very loud laughter. And it says that this laughter, you know, because Krishna has very, very deep voice in general. It's, it's described when Krishna speaks, it's like the uh, sound of the thunder, very deep and penetrating. It voices very deep and it, you know, that it goes very deep uh, into the heart as well. And uh, so he started laughing, very deep and very loud laughter of Lord Nisimhidev. And it is described that Hiranya Kashyapu was completely horrified. And he lost all his power and he couldn't fight anymore. And he was actually kind of deafened by the laughter of the Lord. And then it is described that Lord just picked him up and put him on his lap. And as His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj would say, he performed the first surgical operation in the history of the universe. <laughs> and uh, actually, one interesting episode is described in. Uh, um, one uh, 
book which is part of Naradiya Purana and it is a uh, very wonderful part of Bhakti Shastra uh, spoken by Narad Muni himself. It's called um, Sri Hari Bhakti Shuddhadaya. Sri Prabhupada quotes from that scripture a few times if you heard that verse Bhagavad Bhakti Hinasya. Uh, Ma, uh, jati, Mantra Jati, Bhagavad uh, Bhakti Hinasya. Jati Shastra Chapatapa Apranasya Dehasya Lokana uh, uh, Mandanam Lokala Pranjanam that uh, without Bhagavad Bhakti, without devotional service, um, any activity, uh, high birth, jati, uh, shastra, knowledge of scriptures, japa, uh, chanting japa, for tapa, any austerities, they are uh, completely useless. In the same way as Apranasaiva Dehasya, uh, or as was standing right next to Nishin Vedak, was not afraid of him at all. You see that he's offering his garden uh, to Nishin Vedak. And uh, Hirani Kashuku, being very scared, started shouting. Anyone knows by any chance what Hirani Kashuku was shouting? No one heard this? Very interesting. He started shouting, Mommy! 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 <laughs> and Prahlad Maharaj was standing next to Hirani Kashupa and he was saying, You fool! The most important moment of your life is happening right now. So, you should not shout, Mommy! Mommy! Actually, this is, a, this is a statistical fact that Many great warriors. <laughs> At the moment of that, they shout, Mommy, Mommy. <laughs> and just guess where they are going after death. They are going to the womb of another mother, right? Their uh, material existence continues. So if you remember mother at the moment of death, you go to mother. And so Prahlad Maharaj was saying, you should not. Shout, mommy, you should shout, Govinda, Govinda, Govinda. And he was standing right next to Hirani Kishapo, and in his ears he was shouting, Govinda, Govinda, Govinda. And thus Hirani Kishapo departed. And so, you know, his death was auspicious by the mercy of his son, even though he could not chant the holy name, but Prahlad Maharaj was chanting the holy name for him. And we know that sometimes it's happening uh, also in the lives of devotees uh, who are present at the departure of their parents and sometimes parents they cannot chant the holy name but devotees, devotee children they chant for them and so in this way their departure becomes very auspicious and uh, yeah <coughs> this was the end of Hiranyakashipu, and then, as it is described, Nusingadev stayed just a little bit longer to associate with Prahlad Maharaj, accept his prayers, give his benedictions to Prahlad Maharaj and to everybody else, and then he departed. It was very short, Lila. Nusingadev just came to kill Hiranyakashipu, bless Prahlad Maharaj, and then he disappeared. And uh, Shal Prabhupada, he introduced the worship of Nishingadev in our society very early. Anyone knows what was the occasion? Our Los Angeles temple was attacked and someone threw a uh, bomb into the Pujari room, into the Diti room. Deities were not heard. The bomb landed in the place where all the outfits were stored. But many outfits were burned. So there was a little fire in the temple. And then Shri Prabhupada, he said, uh, you should start worshiping Nishingadev for protection. And then he introduced 
this mantra, which is very well known nowadays all over ISKCON, Namaste and Rasingaya, Prabhupada Nainai. He was teaching devotees one word at a time. No one heard this mantra before at the time. And so, Rasingadeva is a divine protector in the same way as he was protecting Prahlad Maharaj from all the calamities, so he is protecting uh, his devotees from all the calamities. And therefore, this is form which is very much loved by all the Vaishnavas. It says that even in Braj, in Kolokurinda, Rasingadeva is there, because Nanda Maharaj is worshipping Rasingadeva. <laughs> So all the devotees, even though Narasimha Dev is kind of Maya Vaikuntha Murti, but he is very much loved by everyone, including Brajabhasis. And uh, one even more important aspect of Narasimha Dev that he is protecting us not only outside, from outside, because we see Bahir Narasimha and Fridaya Narasimha. He is protecting us not only externally, from different calamities, but also from inside of our hearts, what are the internal calamities we are facing? Many, many internal enemies we have, right? What are the internal en enemies? Lust, anger, greed, yes. envy, pride, illusion. Yeah, all the unhappiness, <coughs> all the unwanted qualities, and so on. Can make an operation on our heart as well. And uh, yeah, there are many, many stories of course connected to Nishinga that even contemporary stories, uh, starting from Shiva Prabhupada, how he prayed to Nishinga that at one point, there was one man who created a lot of trouble to his own in Bombay. Uh, when Shiva Prabhupada was trying to get that land in Juhu and then Shiva Prabhupada and he was cheating the devotees and actually he resorted to violence at one point um, hires some gundas to attack the devotees and then Shiva Prabhupada he realized that this man has went too far and then he prayed to Nusingada to take care of this man and what happened to this man? He died of heart attack. <laughs> and then, after that, his wife, she came and she said, Swamiji, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> because she didn't, she realized that Shua Prabhupada is too powerful. <laughs> and she didn't want to have the same destiny <laughs> like her husband. And so she surrendered and Prabhupada gave up the land. And so many other stories like that, starting from Shil Prabhupada and of course many other devotees like uh, one of my friends, uh, his name is Patri, he's preaching in um, Nepal, he's one of the leaders in Nepalese Yatra, he's from Russian, Ukrainian origin, that he knows Hindi and he's he stays, he stayed in India and uh, Nepal for many, many years already. And uh, he told me this story that, as you might be aware, in Nepal, they have a lot of you know, fighting and all this kind of, it's very unsteady kind of situation. And, um, you know, when there are upheavals, then also, you know, some criminals, they become active. They want to take advantage of the situation. And there was one man who was a black belt karate champion. And uh, he became gunda, he became a bandit. And he was uh, specifically, you know, he was robbing everybody. And then he started robbing different temples also. And um, he came to his temple in Nepal and he said, you should give me this much money, big amount of money. Otherwise, if you won't give the money, 
the same thing will happen what we did to Buddhist temple. And actually they also charged Buddhist temple, they didn't pay the money, and they blew up the whole thing. And he said, we'll blow you up as well. <clears throat> and no matter how much, you know, the devotees tried to preach to him, nothing helped. This man was too greedy, he said, no, I just want money. I don't care about anything, and I have no fear of anyone. Mm. No one can stop me. So, and then he said, this is the date, a few days later, you have to have this money ready for me. And then, uh, the devotees were saying what to do, and then he said, we should pray to Nusingada. And whole night, the devotees were praying to Nusingada for protection. And then next morning, no, next day, they found out, or maybe a couple of days later, they found out that this man, he went, you know, something happened uh, to his tooth. He had to go to the dentist, and the dentist was drilling his tooth, and he hit the nerve, and this man had heart attack and died. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. You think that always operates on the heart level. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there are so many stories. How um, Nusinga Dev is still protecting his devotees <clears throat> today because it's not, the Lord is not like ordinary personality who's been some time ago, like historical personality, been there some time ago, but now he's not there anymore. No, Lord is everywhere. Lord is in every atom of the universe. Therefore, it says that the deity of the Lord is not different from the Lord. The holy name of the Lord is not different from the Lord. Scripture is not different from the Lord. Because Lord is always here. It's us who are absent. But we think the other way around. We think we are here, and, but the Lord is not here. No, it's the other way around. The Lord is here, but because we are absent-minded, because we are engrossed in our ignorance, this is the only reason we cannot perceive the presence of the Lord. But how do we dissipate that ignorance? In the same way as we dissipate our ignorance when we want to get up in the morning. Right? How do we do that? the sound of alarm clock and what is our alarm clock for the soul that is the holy name Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namaste Narasimha Narasimha Madhim Sharanam Prabhupada so any mantra which contains the holy name of the Lord is acting like an alarm clock for our consciousness to wake us up to the reality that Lord is here. No fear, Lord is here. <clears throat> and uh, therefore devotees, they are very confident about the Lord's protection. This is actually one of the items in Sharanagati. There are six items. Anukuliasa Sankalpa Pratikuliasa Vajanam Rakshi Seti Tivishwa Soko Prithe Varanam Tata Atmaniksha Pakarpanye Sadhida Sanangata. The first item is to accept everything which is favorable, anukul, then reject everything which is unfavorable to devotion service, practical. <coughs> then Rakshi Seti Tivishwa. So, third item is to always be confident about the Lord's protection. And the fourth item is Kopretve Paradam Tata. Anyone remembers? Accept the Lord as one's main day there. Yes. And then Atmanik Shepa, same like Admani Vedan. What is that? Full self surrender and Karpanye. That is um, humility. <coughs> so the. <coughs> If anyone will ever ask you, what does it mean to surrender to Krishna? So you'll have to know these six items. So if these six items are there, that means one is surrendered to the Lord. And uh, <coughs> therefore devotees, they're always confident about the Lord's protection. 
And of course, this is very unusual. Um, how to say, form of the Lord. Um, and sometimes there are some interesting occurrences when we try to introduce Krishna consciousness to completely new people, especially who do not belong to, um, I can say, Indian tradition, who are not familiar with Vedic tradition, Sanatana Dharma. I remember I was uh, explaining to one Christian lady about Krishna consciousness, and then he, she happened to see that picture of Nusingadev, which is on your wall. And she said, who is this? I said, well, this is one of the forms of, of God. And she looked at Nusingadev, and she looked at, the, looked at the whole picture, and he said, oh, oh but who is that monster who is tearing God apart? <laughs> So her idea was that God is one who is on Nusinga Dev's lap. So probably she got that idea from, you know, Christian tradition, you know, Jesus Christ on the cross suffering. So I said, no, this, this man is not real God. He was thinking he is God, but then he found out that he is not. But the real God is one who is tearing his apart, him apart. So anyway, and... Uh, one time, I remember we were going uh, from one place to the other. Uh, one devotee was driving, I was in the passenger seat. <clears throat> and we were going a little bit too fast, to be honest. We were a little late to the program. And then, you know, what do you call Road police, traffic warden. They, you know, actually we were passing by their checkpoint. And we didn't even reduce the speed because we were, you know, too much absorbed in talking to each other. And with full speed on, we were passing by the, you know, checkpoint. And then this policeman, he jumped out and he stopped us. And we stopped. And uh, I think we were going like 140, 150 kilometers per hour, <laughs> pretty fast. And uh, then he was so kind of uh, angry that we were completely disregarding that we were, you know, we were just we were supposed to reduce speed and we were so impudent that even in front of him we were like speeding so much. But we were just like that. <laughs> All of a sudden when we came out of the car, he said, are you speeding towards your death? What are you doing, guys? And uh, I just happened to say that, well, Lord is protecting us. And he said, which Lord will protect you? Mm. And I happened to have li uh, little pocket calendars with this picture of Nusingadev. And I pulled out the picture of Nusingadev. I said, this is the Lord who protects us. And he looked at the picture. And uh, I was tempted to say, that, you know, the one who is on uh, nursing death's lap was the last policeman who was trying to stop <laughs> you with this. <laughs> but I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, this is the Lord who is protecting us. And I said, if, if you like, he will protect you also. And there was mantra written on the calendar. I said, for protection. You chant this mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And he looked at me, he said, seriously? I said, absolutely. He said, okay, you can go. <laughs> Didn't give us a ticket or anything. <laughs> so it's very interesting. I when you think there's acting sometimes. So, yeah, you like to hear another contemporary nursing of story? Yeah. Yeah? We still have that? So, one of the first Nusingadev deities was installed in Russia and 
uh, Yoga Nursinga was brought by Srila Indra Maharaj. <clears throat> and it is a brass deity. And at some point, some thieves came to the temple in disguise of guests. And they thought that this deity is made of gold. <laughs> and so at night, they broke into the temple and they stole Yoga Nursinga. And of course, all the devotees were very alarmed. And then these thieves, they were thinking, they couldn't realize that his cone is a connected network. So they took the deity from South Russia to the North Russia to St. Petersburg, if anyone heard of that place. And uh, they tried to sell the deity to another is <laughs> <laughs> But in that temple, it was already known that this deity is stolen. Because <clears throat> yeah, there are not that many uh deities in Russia fully installed and worshipped uh, to the full standard. And the devotees said, OK, we will buy this deity a uh, few days later. And they made an appointment with these thieves. But then they called police. And then police arrested these people and they um, took Nusingadev. But because you know these devotees, they didn't own the deity, police didn't want to give them the deity. Rather, and they kept the deity in the police station. And they said, we'll have to make a public announcement so that the owners would contact us. And they decided to make an announcement over the central TV program. And so they showed Nusingadev oh. on a central TV channel, <laughs> announcing you know, that this uh, sculpture was stolen from one of the temples. And so we request the owners to contact uh, this and the you know, police on this number. And Nusingadev was shown. And then the devotees came, and they realized that it was Nusingadev, another pastime. Because he wanted to give his darshan not only to a few hundreds of people, or people in the temple, he wanted to give darshan to you know hundreds of millions of Russian people over the central TV channel. <laughs> so that was his uh, intention. So I'm just thinking that is a very interesting character <laughs> in this way. He's quite funny, even though he appears in this form. So there are many more things, of course, connected to missing them. But. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, have to finish, and Anand Guranga Prabhu uh, requested to mention something about the project uh, I'm coordinating. Uh, it's happening in 10 countries worldwide, including here in Canada. And the project is called SUN. Uh, this is acronym for Spiritual United Nations, and it is connected to United Nations in New York and Geneva. And uh, the goal of the project is, as Prabhupada said, this project, by the way, is meant to fulfill Shri Prabhupada's the very first purpose of ISKCON, which is to uh, systematically propagate spiritual knowledge to society at large and teach all people the techniques of spiritual life to check the imbalance of values and achieve real unity and peace in the world. So it's very broad uh, and very ambitious goal. So this project is meant to help to achieve that goal. <clears throat> so we want to re-spiritualize the human society. But this time, we <clears throat> uh, want not only to count on our strength of devotee communities, we want to bring all spiritual communities who, who can contribute to the upliftment of the society <clears throat> and direct this whole network. The beautiful thing is that devotees will be directing the whole network because only devotees have full knowledge and devotees are very much valued all over the world. I can tell you maybe some other time story about one Jewish group, very influential, our contacts, everything, into the development of Hare Krishnas in our country, in Israel, because this is the only group which can bring peace and unity to this country. So this is appreciation coming from completely different tradition, Jewish tradition. So, so many people do appreciate devotees. And actually, many, many people look up at devotees 
as potential leaders and they wait when devotees will take the lead. So the time had come for devotees to actually take the lead <coughs> and uh, yeah, create a spiritual environment all over the planet to restore that glorious past which is described in Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, uh, explained how it was explained by Shri Prabhupada. So this wonderful time had come and uh, it's, uh, this project is registered already in here, in Toronto. And uh, Ananda Gauranga Prabhu shows a lot of interest to take part in this project, which of course will give many, many benefits, countless benefits to the community uh, in Scarborough, of course, as well. And uh, <clears throat> so the idea, I think, is that if anyone is interested, you can contact him and uh, you can discuss how we want to go about it. And the objective, you know, the aim is to re-spiritualize the whole human society, but then the objective, which means how do we do that, is um, very unique. We want to become the main providers uh, of spiritual technology or spiritual techniques, as Prabhupada said, to the government agencies. So we want to become a liaison between spiritual groups or interfaith, whatever you call it. But we don't want to limit ourselves to religious groups only because there are yoga people and vegetarians and many other groups <coughs> who can contribute to the equipment. And uh, we want to engage all their uh, you know, effective techniques in uh, uplifting the society, but of course devotees will be uh, contributing with chanting of Hare Krishna and uh, prasadam and devotee association and knowledge derived from Srila Prabhupada's book. So we can add cherry on the top of the cake and uh, really make it happen. So if you're interested to take part in that project, you can always talk to Ananda Goran Guru because I'm just a guest here. I'm here today, gone tomorrow, but he's here to stay. So please discuss it with him and you can decide what you want to do and how you want to do it here. So the whole country is open for you. People are waiting. So thank you very much for your...